people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Shivangi Mishra with another episode of South Asia Focus. India has started vaccinating children aged 15 to 18 against the coronavirus as it quickly expands its inoculation effort to cover the world's largest adolescent population amid fears the Omicron variant of coronavirus will drive a new surge of infections. We have a report. India has the largest population of adolescents in the world with about 253 million of them. To protect children aged 15 to 18 against the coronavirus, India has started a massive vaccination drive. The government is giving children Bharat Biotech's co-vaccine that is only vaccine with emergency use listed for teens in the country. On Christmas Day, Prime Minister Narendra Modi had announced vaccination for the 15 to 18 year age group and a precautionary third dose for health workers and citizens above the age of 60. I didn't know that because my family members had given me, so they said that there was no fear. I didn't know when it was going to be vaccinated. और मतलब लोगों ने ऐसी बना रखा है कि ये होता है वो होता है तैयारी अच्छी है और जिस हिसाब से अभी हम लोगों ने स्टार्ट किया है बच्चे अच्छे आने शुरू हो गए हैं तो हमें वैक्सीनेशन पूरी है सर हमें लग रहा है कि बच्चे आएंगे इंडिया इज विटनेसिंग अ सडन सर्च इन कोरोना वायरस केसेस Public health experts say the next few weeks are crucial in the fight against the latest phase of COVID-19 as they predict a big surge engulfing the country in the days to come. New restrictions have been imposed in major cities to curb the rising coronavirus cases. Schools, colleges, gyms and places of tourist attractions are shut to prevent people from gathering and spreading the virus. Government and private offices, shopping malls, markets and restaurants were allowed to function with 50% of the staff at many places. तो फिनेंशियल रेवेन्यू लॉस होगा ये बात सही है लेकिन गवर्नमेंट का तो चिंता अपना है आम जनता के लिए है ना इसीलिए आम जनता का सुरक्षित रहे साथ साथ में हमारा जू को जितना जू का जितना स्टाफ है जानवर वगैरह है इन लोग को भी सुरक्षित रहना चाहिए इसीलिए सरकार ने जो सिद्धांत लिया वो अच्छा ही किया इन मेनी टूरिस्ट एरियाज प्रिकॉशनरी स्टेप है वायरस In Agra city, cash ticket windows have been shut down for the iconic Taj Mahal monument and Agra fort. Visitors will only be able to book their entry pass online for now. मॉन्यूमेंट प्रेमाइसेस के बाहर कहीं पे भी टिकट करते समय या टिकट विंडो के पास जो गैदरिंग इकट्ठा हो जा रही हमारे लिए मुश्किल हो जाता है उनको कंट्रोल करना या उस भीड़ को हटाना। तो हमने ये डिसाइड किया अभी टेम्परेली जब तक कि ये स्थिति सामान्य नहीं होती है हम मैनुअल टिकट विंडो को बंद रखेंगे इंडिया हैज एडमिनिस्टर्ड ओवर 148 मिलियन कोविड 19 वैक्सीन डोजेस टू इट्स सिटीजन्स एंड द ड्राइव इज ऑन गोइंग ऑन वॉर फुटिंग हाउ एवर ऑमिनस द न्यू वेव इज इंडिया इज बेटर प्रिपेयर देन इट वॉज ड्यूरिंग द लास्ट ईयर्स डिजास्टर सेकेंड वेव which was fueled by the Delta variant. Let's now move to Gorkha in Nepal, which was the epicenter of devastating earthquake of 2015. To reconstruct houses in affected areas, the government of India joined hands with the United Nations Development Program, UNDP. The project has not only benefited the earthquake affected families, but it has generated employment opportunities for the local women.
Bar Park in Gorkha district was the epicenter of 2015 earthquake that killed nearly 9000 people. Hundreds of thousands of people were made homeless with entire villages flattened across many districts of the Himalayan nation. To lend a helping hand to its neighbor, India decided to construct houses in Gorkha district with the support of United Nations Development Program. It not only provided new houses to the locals but created jobs for many including the women. Madhu Maya Sunar is one of the certified trained masons. दिन को अब दो से साय पचास रुपए जेला मधुरी कर खाएं दे ऐसे मकाई गुड़नी धान गुड़नी कर रही नहीं थे अब ते यो तालिम पाए पशी ताली केरे जेला पनी बढ़े दाजुर से से इन्ना काम कर रही ना सक्यो अली आसान देरे बो पहले काम ना अली कम से इवन ये अली अहम मौसम से आरके बोए नहीं था Being one of the trained female masons, Madhu actively took part in the reconstruction of her neighbor's house a few steps away from hers. Khushi lai, Ramru lai, aur moi lakhon desto dhora chaan. The reconstruction drive, which went on from March 2018 to December 2021 in Gorkha, was able to produce over 6,842 masons, out of which 424 were women, who played a pivotal role in the construction process locally. Our support was to how to utilize the uh, the local material, and how one person. His capacity to carry entire one house building material that consists of you know some kind of GIS, one bag of cement, and then utilizing all other local materials and the salvage materials they have lost during the uh, earthquake. So that was what uh, we have been advocating and uh, you know. Uh, Uh, generating awareness uh, with the community as well as the beneficiary the government of india supported construction of 50000 houses in gorkha and nuwakot districts of nepal the indian government had committed 1 billion us dollars for reconstruction of nepal in form of grant and line of credit 150 million US dollars was allocated for reconstruction in housing sector 100 million US dollars as grant and 50 million US dollars to be drawn from line of credit Time now for Asia this week the stories from across the continent A report is awaited to be released by Nepal's Home Ministry about illegal encroachments by China in bordering districts including Humla, Gorkha, Darchula, Dolakha and Sindupal Chowk. In September last year, a seven-member committee headed by the Home Secretary was formed by the Nepal government to study the Nepal-China border in the northern part of Humla. The team studied border pillars, especially in the Limi Valley. and initial findings confirmed that there were some serious border issues between Nepal and China Shimizu Corporation has built a zero energy building that is ZEB in Japan's Kanazawa with an aim to protect environment It is the region's first such building constructed with energy saving and power generation technology. The solar power electric generation system in this office produces more electricity than consumption. Shou kankyo gata office o hokuriku kara toyu kanten de mazu saisho ni kono kankyo o toku ni zeb o tatsei suru toyu koto o mokyo ni agete torikumimashita. Samazama na shou energy no gizu o saiyou shimashite mata tatemono no design mo shou energy nare yo ni design o konaimashite mazu tsukau energy o gutto herashita. 
solar power generation, radiant air conditioning, use of geothermal heat that utilizes a unique characteristic of the region and natural airflow and lighting makes this building energy efficient. Hydrocubic, a hydrogen energy utilization system has also been used in the building. The office building has been designed by having a ceiling with traditional Japanese building design. Boasting a century-old experience, Japanese soy sauce maker Kikoman never hesitates in tackling issues that a company might face in this dynamically changing world. Environment conservation becomes a major subject to be tackled by the company. We are a food company who's doing business in more than 100 countries. So uh, one of our policy is to promote uh, exchange of food culture. And I believe it's very important activity. And also, as a food company, we try to promote better lifestyle and healthier eating habit through our product and services. And overall, we try to fulfill our responsibility uh, as a public entity, as well as uh, we try to um, contribute to society through activities uh, that is unique to Kikoman Corporation. Kikoman has a vision, innovate and differentiate always to offer meaningful products and services that will lead to healthy lifestyles with delicious food worldwide. Exiled Tibetans staged a protest against Beijing Winter Olympics 2022 in India's northern hill town of Dharamshala over China's human rights violations. China sent troops into remote, mountainous Tibet in 1950 in what it officially termed a peaceful liberation and has ruled there with an iron fist ever since. Tibetan non-government organizations came together to mark a one-month countdown to the Winter Games as part of No Beijing 2022 Global Day of Action, where a skit was performed to highlight China's atrocities on Tibet and other regions. The Olympia is a game of glory and opportunity for the sportsmen to share the uh, sportsmanship, love, peace. But this time it is uh, hosted by Beijing, uh, by the Communist Party of China, a regime that is responsible for the death of millions of Tibetans and Uyghurs and others, a regime that continues to uh, commit gross human rights violations inside Tibet. Therefore, we urge the international community uh, to uh, make China accountable by boycotting Winter uh, Olympic. And we also request uh, the participants, athletes, uh, to boycott it. If not, then please uh, return the bloodstained medal as a show of resistance. China's treatment of minorities has come under increased scrutiny in the run-up to the Games, scheduled from February 4, 2022. Moving on to Afghanistan, which has been facing the worst ever economic crisis after the takeover by the Taliban. Not only trade and businesses, other economic activities like tourism gets badly affected. Today, we take you to Bamiyan province, where absence of visitors is costing locals dearly. The winter landscape around the deep blue mountain lakes of Bande Amir in central Afghan province of Bamiyan presents an arresting spectacle empty of people, but the visitors are missing. After two decades of war and now facing its worst economic crisis, the collapse of Afghanistan, vestigial tourism industry might almost go unnoticed. 
but Bande Amir situated around 3000 meters above sea level and a couple of hours drive from the renowned Buddhist sites of Bamiyan usually attracts thousands of visitors a year seeking respite from the endless conflict. قبلن خو خیلی خوب بودن معمولا زمستان ها برنامه اسکی و بعضی مسابقات برگزار می شدن توریست ها می آمدن و بهار هم بسیار زیاد می آمدن در مدتی که طالبان آمده چار چار و نیم ماه بیشتر میشه هیچ توریستی رو تا بانوز ما در بند امیر ندیدیم Bamiyan province was one of the rare places that remained sheltered from the conflict that ripped much of Afghanistan apart over the past 20 years and developed a relatively liberal culture in which mountain sports played a significant role. The skiers and cyclists on the slopes and roads as well as the thousands of picnickers and sightseers enjoying the area's natural beauty offered a vision of carefree peace that was in stark contrast to the violence elsewhere. مردم بندمیر معمولا همی قریه کی زندگی میکنیم افتاد اشتاد خانه زندگی میکنه کل آیداد اینا به توریست هستن وقتی توریست بیاین خوبن روزگارشون چرخشون میچرخه و اگر توریست نیایا هیچ کاروبار نیست فعلا دو سال میشه هر سالم که کرونا و گپا بود کمتر شده بود و این سال خو تعولات آمد و طالبان آمد هیچ بالکل توریستی رو در بندمیر ما توانوز ندیدیم the area was declared a national park in 2009 and while Bamiyan as a whole remained generally poor and underdeveloped, the tourism, which continued during the years of war, has left clear signs of prosperity in the little village by the lake. Next, we move on to India's Jammu and Kashmir, which is gradually becoming a hub of adventure sports. From skiing to trekking to rafting, the territory has a lot to offer owing to its topographical and geographical features. At present, the authorities are laying more emphasis on introducing several new adventure sports both to promote tourism as well as to give an adrenaline rush to adventure junkies. Have a look. One of the ideal destinations for thrill-seekers, JNK is all set to exploit its potential for adventure tourism. Gone are the days when territory only has skiing, rafting and trekking in the name of adventure activities. Today, the authorities have added many more options to the list. One among them is sky running which is a sport of mountain running up to or exceeding 2,000 meters. The minimum average incline is over 6% and also includes sections of 30%. It is a challenge unlike any other and is rewarded by the most spectacular scenery and landscapes one can ever encounter. To give boost to the sport recently, the third Sky Running National Championship was held in the outskirts of Srinagar city. Organized by National Sky Running Association of India, in collaboration with a local NGO, the championship saw around 400 participants. They covered 10 to 20 km distance from Harwan to Dara and back to Harwan. The championship was divided into various categories, sub-junior, junior and senior. Participants urged to have more such competitions in future. It's a sky running race. We uh, have categories bhi hai, juniors, sub-juniors and seniors. So it's a race from uh, Harwan to Dara for me as I'm in juniors category. So yeah, it's good. Uh, such events should be organized in future as well so that everybody gets a chance to participate. And in fact, sports is must in our life as compared as compare, as it's compared that sports is not that good. But yeah, it should be done and these events should be organized. Paragliding is another adventure spot which is getting a major push in the territory. By taking one on a magical whirl around the majestic valleys and the grandiose of the Himalayas, it serves as a great tourist attraction. Authorities too are fully exploiting its potential. Recently, the tourism department organized a paragliding event at Atham, which is 20 kilometers away from Jammu. 
With a total flight time of 4 minutes, Atham is one of the best spots for paragliding. Considering its view, accessible start-off point and smooth landing on a sand bed of a river. पहले भी यहाँ पे पैराग्लाइडिंग के ट्रायल हुए हुए हैं तो आज हम लोग एक तरीके से इसे फिर से शुरू कर रहे हैं और आगे हमारी कोशिश है और हम लोग इसे इंश्योर करेंगे कि ये हमारे टूरिज़्म डायरेक्टरेट के लिए हमारे कैलेंडर के लिए एक परमानेंट फीचर हो और यहाँ पे हम लोग प्राइवेट स्टेक होल्डर्स जो भी इस तरीके की एक्टिविटी करते हैं उनके साथ मिल इसे एक परमानेंट फीचर्स में डेवलप करेंगे ये एक बहुत अच्छा इनिशियटिव है और अगर मैं बात करूँ एज ए लोकल पिछले महीनों से कुछ देखा गया है कि जम्मू का जो टूरिज्म डिपार्टमेंट है कहीं ना कहीं जम्मू के ऊपर तोज्जो दे रहा है क्योंकि जम्मू में हम पुरथुल बीच के वो ऐसा था कि जैसे गोवा का बीच हो उससे पहले हम ट्रैकिंग करने महोरगढ़ गए नौ किलोमीटर का आठ किलोमीटर का वो ट्रैक था और जब हमने ट्रैकिंग की मानसर का कहीं ना कहीं लोगों ने अपने आप को नेचर के बीच पाया अगर इस बात करें पैराग्लाइडिंग की पैराग्लाइडिंग इज इक्वल टू जैसे लगता है कि जैसे मैंने एक बार की है बीर बिल्डिंग में और जम्मू में मेरा ये फर्स्ट है क्योंकि मैंने बाहर से अपनी एजुकेशन कम्प्लीट की है तो वहाँ चांस मिला था तो जम्मू वालों के लिए ये एक्साइटमेंट वाली चीज़ है Motorsport activities too are going on in full swing in territory attracting a number of adventure lovers as the valley offers some of the most beautiful tracks some renowned and professional car racers have even led to the formation of groups like Kashmir Off Road with an aim to promote car racing events Moreover the tourism department also keeps on organizing numerous motorsport activities to give boost to tourism चूँकि ये नया एक स्पोर्ट है और इसमें एडवेंचर स्पोर्ट है तो आजकल के यूथ जो हैं वो ऐसी एक्टिविटीज़ पसंद करते हैं जिसमें एडवेंचर हो जिसमें एक मतलब एक हट के कोई चीज़ करने का हो तो दिस वाज वन स्पोर्ट विच वी फेल्ट के यहाँ पे इसकी ज़रूरत है तो हमारी एक्टिविटीज़ जो है बेसिकली मेनली दो चीज़ें हैं एक तो ऑफ रोड एडवेंचर है जिससे टूरिज़म प्रमोट होता है दूसरा हमारा जो मोटर स्पोर्ट को हम बढ़ावा देना चाह रहे हैं वो बेसिकली आइडिया यही था कि यहाँ पे एक प्लेटफॉर्म बने मोटर स्पोर्ट का और इसमें जो इधर का यूथ है वो इन्वॉल्व हो वो इस स्पोर्ट को वो इस स्पोर्ट में इन्वॉल्व हो तो पिछले दो साल से हमने इधर इवेंट्स किए हैं तो काफ़ी अवेयरनेस बढ़ गया ड्यू टू इट्स माइंड बॉगलिंग जियोग्राफिकल डाइवर्सिटी एंड एफर्ट्स ऑफ टूरिज्म डिपार्टमेंट जम्मू एंड कश्मीर इज बिकमिंग अ न्यू टूरिज्म हब ऑफ एडवेंचर स्पोर्ट्स With that we come to the end of this week's episode see you next week goodbye and take care People have to live in in unity we are still in transition civil society has been decimated of course we rely on media and i think the government has not done enough the international community has failed to respond no place in the world is perfect